it's Monday morning in the writer's room on Community. They've literally been working Friday, all night Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, and through Sunday night to this morning. So now that they're starting to shoot the scenes, that's we can't write anymore on those scenes. So um, they're, they're resting and relaxing. Dan's passed out on a couch right now. I mean, he's earned it. I think he's had like three hours of sleep in the past four days or so. So we're catching up on rest. Action and rehearsal. Your character's awakened on a muddy riverbank surrounded by treacherous, godforsaken junk. You hear the sounds of rushing water, and the plaintive cries of distant vomit bats. <laughs> I slept at the office. But kind of permanently toward the end there for the last couple of days. Just kept telling my girlfriend, uh, "Yeah, this is this will this will all be over soon. I screwed up. I gotta I gotta just be here." Thank, Thank you very you much, all. guys. Settled in. Action, please. For God's sake, Hank. You know it's been five seconds. Can you not do this? Hey, you tell me. Can I not do this? It, it might. Am I reading that right? Can I not do this is meaning... Can, can I not do this? Yeah, go uh, to this, you, talking about the game stuff, right? Yeah, well, well can, am, I, am I not allowed to do whatever the fuck I want? Is okay, that, is okay, that, yeah. got it, all right. For God's sakes, Hank, it's been five seconds. Can you not do this? Hey, you tell me, all right? Can I not do this? We're shooting this episode down on the set <laughs> while we're writing the second act. And this is, that's a first for season five. I think this last weekend was the first weekend we've ever had to work. Then on Friday, episode 511 will start shooting, which is the finale episode of our show, uh, which uh, hasn't really been written yet at all. The first question becomes, yeah, how do you, what's the best way to start? We washed them down a river. Do we do some kind of time? Time advancement. You don't want to see them in the water because it's not interesting. They wash up, one group washes up on a shore, and then the next time you see the other group, they can already be on the shore because you don't need to see two people washing up. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's chaos because of a photo shoot. So this is all happy, smiling, talking, gesturing. It's not on the, on the fine setting, it's just fine <laughs> human being. Well, where's the script? Oh, there's the guy that's in charge and he's doing some kind of fashion model fantasy. Make any discoveries? I kind of tried to lay out what we were talking about before and I didn't do anything with the David Cross scene. I just kind of leapt forward at the beginning of the next Piggy scene. We can't afford to do another scene where no, nothing, no combat happens. Part of the reason we're in the situation that we're in is because you're having to tell a story about characters that are playing characters that are telling a story. All of our tools that we use to figure out how to make an episode are just out the window because we're just, we're just sitting here turning on an imaginary TV and going, well, what should we see after the commercial? What happens? Maybe the guy should have a funny hat on. I don't know. Well, then what? Uh, it, it's, it's, we're just sort of wandering. You can't just be doing a bunch of jokes about advanced Dungeons and Dragons that only advanced Dungeons and Dragons people are gonna laugh at. You want it to be a red carpet for any casual viewer. Right now what we're chasing is the idea that what Hickey needs to learn to do is play the game. He's trying to use brute force, but his character is Tiny Nuggets, who has no brute force. So when Tiny Nuggets attacks the goblin, it's like, yeah, yeah. Ah. I think that's what it is. It certainly strategically was, was my big mistake of season five in terms of running a writer's room because it, it was going to be too hard to top the first one uh, without making it so different that people would be dissatisfied or so similar that people would be dissatisfied. Um, and the, the biggest sin of all was deciding we're gonna do a Dungeons and Dragons episode um, without knowing what the story would be, and then having to therefore construct a story the way that stories should not be constructed. Since we sat down to get started on this, we've had eight conversations about it. 
punctuated with uh, one photo shoot, uh, one set design meeting about 5.11, which starts to shoot Friday, uh, a, uh, a lunch, a trip to the set for rehearsal of, of Act One, and uh, you just caught the 20 minute uh, text conversation with my girlfriend who's wondering why I don't have time to, uh, to see her. But now we're back to this conversation about uh, uh, what happens at the beginning of, of Act Two of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, nothing has progressed, nothing. Dan would be tortured if he put his name on something that stinks. So uh, when you're in this position and with the amount of pressure from different sources that are pull, not for not for malicious reasons, just because they, you know, like people have their own thoughts about everything. But if you if the creator of the show is uh, sticks to it or an artist sticks to it, then eventually whether it will destroy them or they'll get what they want and thankfully Dan's getting what he wants and we all benefit from it. I woke up this yeah. morning it was in my email inbox. Uh, <laughs> I know it went out at 7 a.m. Yeah. And, and was shooting shortly thereafter. I got in at like 7.30 and um, basically like the path to Dan's couch was just like it had been blasted open and all the doors were still open. He was just like face down on his couch. It felt kind of joyless as I passed out and I sort of fired off a text to Chris McKenna saying, we have an act too, but I'm, I'm a little concerned that it's not the funniest stuff that we've ever shot. And uh, I really felt as I drifted off to sleep that, this, that we were just gonna have to bite that bullet and go, well, we did the best we possibly could, but then I woke up to this little gang of knuckleheads going through the stuff and just adding delicious flavor crystals to what we got, and I'm feeling very good about everything. Abed, you awaken on a muddy riverbank surrounded by treacherous, godforsaken, non zipline vacation jungle. The faint smell of blood is masked by the strong smell of bird feces. The ground beneath your feet crunches with the skulls of tiny rats. Abed! What, you have notes? Did you think Skull River ended in Miami? Something funnier than bird feces should be like bat feces or, or something that's... Bat, bat feces. Vomit bat feces. Oh, come on. <laughs> did, you th did you think Skull River ended in Miami? Which way to the Black Tower? Two-time the Druid was, uh, I mean, are we dragging here? Maybe we'll, 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 we'll gut it and get it by. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I don't know. All right, moving on. So from here on forward, it's just stuff for tomorrow, right? We're done with stuff for today. I mean, unless something crazy. Uh, as far as, as far as we understand, yeah, we Sounds like we're ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> go see we're movie. done for today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I texted everybody lunch menus. Well, you get there. I like the kale Caesar salad is really good, and the, the sandwich study of heat mm. is good. The prosciutto and chicken. The club. Too. The vegan bon The vegan bon mi is something Amazing. special. And their side salads. If we, if we had only had to complete <clears throat> the scenes that are shooting today, this would be the credits right now. <laughs> as, as we pull back from a... <laughs> what, what do you think? Kale with a parmesan? Yeah, parmesan with a kale. <laughs> we should go out to lunch, though. Pretty much done for the day. <laughs> There's the funny stuff, the reference, the meta humor. There's the, the, um, uh, uh, the pop culture references, the just general funny lines. Um, then there's the story, which has heart to it, always, um, and they, then there's the layering of things that you don't know to mean anything. They seem innocuous at the time, and then they end up meaning something quite important to the story. And to put all those things together into a successful 
uh, comedy with a lot of restrictions because you're on a network and it's 21 and a half minutes you have to tell your story um, with four stack breaks and stuff is really, 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 really difficult. It's exceedingly hard and it takes somebody who um, is really talented and passionate about doing that. So we've finished what we feel is a completed act two and uh, the only thing left is to comb through Act 3, in which the separated parts of the Dungeons and Dragons game come back together, having spent the entire story apart. We want there to be this sort of battle that takes place, and have the irony be that everyone but Banks and Cross kill each other. And then once they're all dead and ready to stop the game, David Cross and Jonathan Banks' characters continue to to bicker and fight. The, the necromancer, who was the original goal of the game, flees while, while the rest of them kill each other. So at the, at the top of Act 3, the group is sharpening their pencils and straightening their character sheets and polishing their dice in preparation for this reunion, which they have no idea is going to go good or bad. We, we want to create a situation where the physical blocking of the living room feels like the fantasy blocking in the game. If somebody's touching somebody in the living room if, at this moment when there's a standoff, it, it, it muddies the water. Mm. We had said at one point the idea of like the necromancer bringing people back from the dead. Is that way? Is Shirley get brought back from the dead? She, has, she comes back. She's like in her in her ro in her bathrobe, and she's like, "What is this?" <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, you're even brought back from the dead. Okay, so what can I do? Oh, you can't do anything. The Negromancer's controlling you. Like, why am I here? <laughs> right here, right at the, right at the ever-loving end. This time, it's more. Lord of the Rings-ish in that it's supposed to have a more epic feel because there's a large group and they've been divided and they're they're racing to 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 a thing and there there might be a huge battle when they when they both get there. All right. Ugh. Huzzah. Huzzah. What is that? Forty-eight hours. I'm gonna go home and uh, see if my dog recognizes me. It's, it's, it's being shot here on the TV right in front of us. They're about a third of the way done. And <laughs> uh, so it's all in your hands now. No paparazzi. Right. Here we go. And on action? On action, yes, sir. I really thought that Dungeons and Dragons episodes were easier to write. Yeah, here we go. And actually, I'm a fool. I'm a real fool. I can get us back on schedule by writing the finale from top to bottom tomorrow. You gotta learn to roll with the punches around here. Oh boy. I've become a better actor this season because Dan Armand came back. M my, my, I have improved as an actor as a result of Dan Harmon's return. And, and uh, I mean, for me, that's what I'll get out of this season. And I, I'm, I'm just so grateful for that opportunity. And it's such a great feeling that I can still get better as an actor and I can still learn and I can still, you know, keep pushing myself, much like Dan pushes himself to, to, to make these episodes so good. So that, that's been the biggest joy for me. And uh, on so many levels, I'm so grateful to dance back. Let's write a finale from top to bottom. If we get it done today, we can, we're back on schedule, kind of. All right. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna see a, an amazing day. We're out of the woods now. We fell into a swamp. <laughs> All we have to do is write the last episode of season five uh, by 
midnight, have it ready to read tomorrow, and I think we're, you know, we're in really good shape. Guys, Sony didn't like back three of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh. Yeah. What was the note exactly? What did they like about it? Not sure if you guys are continuing to refine Act 3, but wanted to express concern about the ending in these pages. I've been totally on board with the father-son story you've been telling throughout the first two acts, but there's no satisfying resolve at the end. Whatever way you choose to finish the Hickey Hank story, I'm open to, but right now it ends without any conclusion between the two, just that they may or may not play D&D in the coming days or months to finish the game. The story begs for some sort of confrontation between them. I'm sure you guys are still working hard on the script, but wanted to pass along my thoughts just in case. I think they're always going to have a problem with the fact that Hickey and Hank um, continue their conflict. They're, I think they're going to always find the non-resolution which unsatisfying, even though we think, and I think we all know, that doing a satisfying, uh, trying to go for a resolution between Hank and Hickey there is always going to feel false and that actually it's more interesting and more true to life that this, father, it's, this conflict is the resolution to the conflict. It might be the open door to something else, but it's not certainly not going to be wrapped up in a game with D&D. One thing's for sure, we, gotta, we, can, we, can, we have one last chance to take a look at Act 3 yeah. and uh, see to it that it's funny and, and, and touching. I don't, I don't want uh, the, uh, the lack of a pat resolution does not necessarily uh, have to mean unsatisfying ending. It's, it's, it shouldn't at all. Maybe it's more like Casablanca. But maybe we do put them together, sitting down in the living room. What was the ending of the table draft? Uh, the necromancer flees. I mean, it was it was just pretty pat. They hugged. Remember, and then Jonathan screamed no. <laughs> we're having trouble in this room right now is we're trying to solve fathers and sons which like right like like and, and and maybe that's part of the point though maybe that's an opportunity i think the actual resolution to their relationship is that they've discovered accidentally throughout this episode that they're capable of functioning near each other with this by role playing so we think we have a solution, which often these solutions don't really sound like much of anything after arguing about them for, for two hours. Um, visually, I think you want to see the father and the son sitting down to play D&D &D together because you saw them not playing D&D &D together. You saw them arguing during a game and you saw them separate and you saw them both committing to the game separately and now they're coming together and you want to see them fight a little bit but ultimately the proper ending of the story that'll give it a feeling of symmetry is to see the father and son sit down together rolling dice and and playing dungeons and dragons in proximity to one another as the rest of the characters who are now dead uh, shrink away and close the apartment door behind them and, and Jeff assures the other characters that even if this doesn't feel like the the perfect resolution it's it's it it is a step forward um, <clears throat> I like the idea of closing the door like the way parents do on two kids who are playing quietly uh, you don't want to mess anything up. You don't want the house of cards to fall down, so you quietly uh, slip away. All right. You are finished, 36 page uh, episode 510, which will translate to 48 minutes of, of footage that anyone can turn into an episode just by cutting out what you don't like. That's the real secret. So saying it has to be a Dungeons and Dragons episode broke our own cardinal rule that we had learned over four seasons. And, and that was, now maybe the episode will turn out great. Maybe it'll be the best of the season. Maybe it'll be the worst, that I don't know. But I know that in terms of time budgeting, it, it, that was my huge thrown shoe on the racetrack because 
It took so long to figure out how to do Dungeons and Dragons that not only were we writing it while they were shooting it, we then, ha then as we were going into the last two episodes, we had no, we, we, we didn't have those either. So it was just this, this, there's this ripple effect to getting behind schedule. We are heading over to the uh, audio mixing stage where Mark Binder puts the final touches on an episode. It's the last time I actually see something before we send it off, uh, ready to be broadcast. I don't know how fun this would be for like, a hardcore fan to know. Like, here's a hallway that they've seen a thousand times. This is uh, one of our two stages. So you've seen this hallway a billion times. This is stage 31. And then now over here, this is Dr. Phil's stage. Stage 30, I believe, where they shoot Dr. Phil and uh, the doctors and stuff. Uh, it's also, we share it with them. We have a little room in there where we do our audio mixing. So sometimes I'll drop a deuce in Dr. Phil's toilet. I'm gonna see if they're ready. Are you guys ready for us? So the editor, the music supervisors, and our post supervisor, Jake, sit here and watch Mark go through the episode from the beginning to the end, reviewing for one last time. It's the most fun for me because I sit here in this Captain Kirk chair and, and, and ease my hemorrhoids. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff, um, Mr. Winger, and this is Fundamentals of Law. Okay, so, uh, uh, so around 2.34, Jeff walking into the study room, and people are supposed to be razzing him about being a teacher. The key is obviously that if, if nine people are clearly razzing him about being a teacher at the same time, then none of them are. We have stuff, so let's listen to what we've got there. Power down. Wait, I got a cup on there. Well, Professor Winger. Hey. Please don't razz me about being a teacher. That sounded good. Hey. Hey. When uh, Hickey stabs Leonard with his fork, which <laughs> I already found visually appalling. Just for your laugh. Mr. Winger oh, is I. <laughs> so what? I would just say silence. The riot music, I'm not. I definitely think it should be dry until the can hits the floor. Mm -hmm. Or if, I mean, there could be a version where there's a little bit of her marching music, like kind of incidental, bop, 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 but then yeah. dry as she calls out what she's calling out, and then the can hits over, and then bop, 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 bop. I envy his ability to, to break down story in a way that, that uh, I find fascinating. This is what we've got for 511 right now. There's a lot of activity in these areas. You can see they'll be starting in a first act and proceeding across a threshold, making various adaptations to their new situation, which will lead them to a deeper truth that will cost them something, but also teach them something from whence they'll return. The ordinary world with the power to change it. It's a little idea I came up with. I think it'll work. Now we just have to fill in the details. So we finished Dungeons and Dragons and then we had no time at all to start assembling a uh, finale. The idea that you could get a virus from a computer and that this guy had sex with a computer and he got a virus and uh, it's like it wasn't about contagion maybe necessarily, it was about keeping the school, avoiding the scandal. There's, there could be a, an accompanying um, myth that says there's gold down there. Obviously. We had been talking about this, this, this treasure hunt kind of story actually for years. Um, 
and never finding the right way to do it. Um, the, the, so we, we just kind of, I remember just the emphasis of our conversations was about why would there be anything hidden on Greendale's campus? What would it be? So we're, we, we're, it's uh, it's 2.17 on Thursday. Uh, the Dungeons and Dragons episode is long behind us. That's old news. We've moved on to the finale episode. We're going to shoot some pickup shots tomorrow on Friday instead of the first act of this episode we're trying to write. So that's why there's such a relaxed atmosphere. This thing doesn't shoot till Monday. The key to not panicking uh, uh, in the community writer's room is simply just denial. What do you think, Friedel? I mean, Goonies is the, the inspiration, right? Goonies, yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Does anybody want it written? Does anybody give a shit? I want it written. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's break the story the way we've always broken the story is by looking at the board and going, like, well, like, let's go scene by scene. Let's figure it out. I think we need note cards. We need to put elements on note cards, taping them to the to the whiteboard. I'm trying to break this up into factoids. All of these things are true. This is this is a rumor. This it's true that there was a rumor. Now, so we we can pick and choose which of these things. For instance, we can right away the fact that he's still down there is true, and we definitely don't want to reveal that. Obviously, that's not part of the legend. I feel like I can picture this scene with the whole gang. Yeah, I'm sensing that there's going to be a Jeff and Britta theme to this. Do you want the audio of me going home and playing with my dog, or should I put this on mute? I think our show is all about um, not settling. And I think that's one of the big things with Dan. I don't think he's satisfied to just do an okay show. I think he's he works pretty hard at seeing what else we can dig up. We're making progress on the writing of the finale, which <laughs> we're writing today, and it's shooting on Monday. But one of the pickups that we've got scheduled for today is uh, a couple scenes from 507. We're picking those up because it got late in the night when they were shooting that episode last time. Rehearsal. Right. Rehearsal's up, guys. This scene should go from quiet to loud. Yeah, the lesson being that you're very talented, but I have this thing. I can't be late to a movie. I can't well, go into the movie. Yes, I am. No, you need this. Let me go. This is you learning. You are a bad person and a bad cartoonist. Go on, hurt my feet. Say that again. You are a bad person and a bad cartoonist. Well, go on and hurt my feelings. Oh, you have feelings? Have you considered putting them into your work? Your cartoons are monuments to joylessness, nervously assembled jokes based on nothing from your life or anyone's life. You're furious at me for being creative because you want to be able to create. You have all this rage and shame and loneliness, which I don't even know how to feel, much less understand, and you decide to put what on paper? A duck? Jim the duck? You think there's something wrong with me? You think I'm crazy? Jim the duck! Publishers are interested! Oh, well, publishers are stupid. Either that or you misinterpreted what was probably a form letter. Shut up! You shut up! No, you shut We're up! We're yelling! I have yelling. ended up there. Yeah, 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 yeah! You're, you're, you're not talented! We're yelling, 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 yelling! yelling, yelling. You made me miss my movie! Anymore. You made me miss my movie. Okay, great. I think that, you know, experiment when you're doing it. See how insane you can get before you break, because you're, this is, he's right. This has never been done to you before. Right. Like, it, 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 maybe he, you lose actual kind of like, like a tantrum.
I mean, do you still need subterranean? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But all this will be dirt, cobwebs galore. I mean, I don't think that there would be windows, right? Because it's underground. So, okay, so, so we'll cover block, windows we'll all block together. The windows. Yeah. Yeah. That should be an, an, an advantage of being behind schedule is that you you have Denise Pizzini de designing sets that you can actually walk around in and get an idea for what to write <laughs> in them. It's not the way you should be producing television, but when you are this behind schedule, that is an advantage you have over, over an on schedule production is that you're looking at the room where they're going to be in and you can actually feel it and feel the dialogue and the jokes that could come out of it. We're, we're out of money, we're, we, we, we can't, we, we're out of time, we can't create elaborate uh, mazes of clues, we, 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 we have to base the story around our existing sets, we, we have to uh, we can build one set, okay, well I want it to be this computer computer room uh, before I even know what the story is. So then you're having a meeting with the production designer and she's in that 70s kind of computer room. She's off and she's constructing the set and you don't even know what's going on yet. You don't know that Chris Elliott's gonna be involved. You don't know anything. It's just it's just all the first thing you have to know is is because they it takes time to saw wood. What rooms are these stories gonna take place in? Okay, computer room. Uh, so we sort of assembled the story based on uh, being able to make hallways dirty and uh, having a computer room at the end of it. And, uh, and then it was about just making the rest of it as fun as possible. I guess one of my big questions is, how can we make the entrance down there, like, how can we make the threshold feel adventure, more adventurous than walking down a flight of stairs? If there are doors to a downstairs, it's like probably maybe even double doors leading to a stairwell that leads you down to another department of the school. So you know what they should find is, over. they should just find a, a, an, an official 1974 schematic of Greendale that's the only available copy. And they should be like, this is, it's like a set of cooked books. It's like, this is the real map that's the teacher's lounge where the stairwell, the only point of access to the computer sciences department it was, the stairwell is below where we're standing. Like, in fact, right under these vending machines, if we move them and go through the floor, you'll be going down a shaft. Bring me a drink, will ya? It's, uh, pay no attention to the timestamp. It's 6.45 p.m. <laughs> he needs your help, Baldwin. <laughs> This behind the scenes feature at about about how we're down to the wire on our uh, on our finale script is being undercut by our our idle chit chat. <laughs> Come on, people, pitches, pitches. <laughs> Let's talk about Jeff and Britta. Jeff is measurably passionately in love with Britta, whether he likes it or not. When you hook up a magic helmet to him, it, Britta, Britta generates love photons, if this technology is real at all. Or do you do it, you know, Bobro, who is a Jeff Annie shipper, is saying, like, oh, you go through this story with Britta, and then you have, you have Jeff hook up to a computer that proves that he loves Annie. Um, and I guess, Either of those are structural deal breakers. We can change those on the day of the shooting. So what we need to do, I think, is we need to, for Rhonda's sake, poor sweet Rhonda, mm -hmm. we need to be happy enough with this concept that we can ask ourselves, what is this thing? Is it a helmet? Is it a, and how many of them do we need? Uh, but yeah, so let's talk. Is it a thing that goes on your head? Is it something that goes on your heart? Is it simple? Is it complicated? Well, I'm trying to think. We did the polygraph. It was on their hand, and it, it was just on the finger, right? It was yeah. On the, yeah. Remember those like 70s 
Um, you put a quarter in it and you like held something. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, like in an arcade. Uh, you guys, you guys brainstorm uh, uh, designs for this love uh, meter. Yeah. It's uh, 3.23 p.m. on Friday. And we just had what I would consider a breakthrough regarding the emotional component of the story. I was looking for you. Yeah. So, um, this is Rhonda, the prop master. She's, she suffers the most under my uh, <laughs> uh, insanity. Uh, so we, 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 we just figured out, I don't think they're taping. Uh, like, there's gonna be this uh, technology that measures love in 5.11, so we, uh, I'm having them, we're gonna go back up there and I don't know if it's gonna be like helmets okay. or if it's gonna be like something that goes here. I don't know what would go here. It's like an interface that goes to a computer. So Old 70s computer technology. That, that went to your heart area? Right. Like something, something that, that put on, like a dicky <laughs> or a... <laughs> Yeah, like a like a dicky that's a 70s thing and then it's 70s. like like he's designing it to be practical. Uh-huh. It's kind of interesting. So, since it's a dicky, it's turtleneck to look good. Right. Yeah, and I think but the underside of it would have like stuff that looks like it was designed to have circuitry kind of. Okay, good. That gives me something to start on. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Good. Thanks. Cyber dicky. Did we make a good choice there? So I talked to Rhonda while I was down there. She threw out an idea that I thought was 70s. We haven't seen it before. A dicky, like a cyber dicky. <laughs> so I told Rhonda I'd tell her as soon as possible, are we going to need one of these or seven of these? So which ending do we prefer? Let's talk about who goes down the hole. What are the what are the most interesting concepts? Most interesting combinations. Keep people upstairs out of the hole with Chang um, as the chunk in this Goonies. It could be fun to see Hickey being interrogated since we know he's this ex-cop and this tough guy. And right. What if he's in, he's just so much better at this than Chang, and and then but then maybe somehow he through his own hubris, gives up something, or, or like Chang is trying to interrogate him and is just so hopelessly outclassed that I think he's just treating him like a child, but then accidentally ends up saying something. Yeah, the idea of- You process right. something that you have to open right now or it'll melt. <laughs> and you can't tip it over, apparently. It <laughs> Information reward. Information reward. <laughs> it's more Transmitted. Yes, more vodka. Well, delivered as only the prop department can. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask too many questions and don't just have fun, you, you come to a point where the logic doesn't make any sense. Now, National Treasure can get away with that. I think community, um, I don't know, it, we should try at least to have some logic. So. Something that started as conversations about secret societies that left these elaborate clues just ended up coming down to, uh, in true Greendale fashion, there's literally a hole in a wall behind a picture and you find a letter. So how does the end at work then? Is their love still going to open a door or something, and yet their plan to get married is going to fall apart. Uh, buddy, what year was that? Was that that was like the eighties, wasn't it? Uh, nineteen eighty. Okay. Well, what do I do? Let my love open the door. What the hell? To answer your question, Eric, there's two versions. Jeff and the audience know that it's his feelings for Britta that opened the door. The other version is Jeff looks at everybody. Psh, the door flies off the hinges. The computer goes. Blah, 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 blah. Jeff's in love with somebody over there on the other side of the room. Uh, but and everyone looks at what happened and says, "Jeff, what were you, what were you 
thinking about. What, what, how did you do that? And he's like, oh, it's all you guys. I love you guys. All of you. And they're like, oh, that's great. And they go on with the rest of the story. But then at the end, Borchert says, that's not how that works. That was, that's, you felt that way about one, one of those people. Who was it? And he looks at the camera and says, season six. <laughs> I think we, we do something where he goes, who was it? I'll tell you. And he just puts his hand over his mouth for a second. And then we personalize it for yeah. every fan of community. Yeah, we tell him, if you, if you, you, you can control what Jeff just said while, <laughs> while covering his mouth by hashtagging Six seasons in a movie, <laughs> and your choice of character. Uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Jessica Walters from Palo Alto, California. <laughs> 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 A draft full of question marks completed. Right. Yes. We have about four pages of, of our finale written. The cameras are leaving. The real work around here gets done under cover of night, like the nocturnal mammal exhibit at your local zoo. Uh, it's time for us to creep out from under our fake logs and swallow worms and bats. Dan Harmon is a genius. He is the show, I think is probably the easiest way to put it. Yeah, only Dan can do this stuff, yeah. It's fun here. It's more fun than, than you would think if you heard about it on paper. You know, if someone were to describe to you, well, it's a sweaty room, it smells like farts, and they sit around and yell at each other, uh, and then eventually they write a script. You wouldn't believe that. You needed to be here. You needed to see it to believe it. <laughs>